Greetings Marvel Zombies and LCG Slingers. Today we're going to review Marvel Champions, the card game, not to be confused with Marvel's Champions, the teen-filled team from the comics. It's not that. <laughs> Never no. think. This is a new LCG from Fantasy Flight where you will build a deck based around a hero and try to stop a villain before he's able to complete his scheme. All right, so each player will be playing as their own hero. Uh, there are five included in the base. You can see we've got Spider-Man and Captain Marvel set up. They're kind of the two starter decks they recommend. You also got Black Panther, Iron Man, and She-Hulk. Uh, we can talk a little bit more about how they all work later. Uh, and on your turn, you're going to be able to play a series of cards from your hands and as well as take some actions. Now, the way playing cards works, each card has a cost in the upper corner here, and you need to pay that cost in resources in order to pay it. Resources are generated also by cards. So you can see down in this corner that it has a different symbol. All the cards have it. Some cards, a few will even have more than one of those symbols. And if you discard one of those cards, then you get to pay for another one. So for instance, I might discard this card to play this one. Uh, you will also notice these cards have different colors that represent different types of places that they can come from, whether they're specific to your hero or more basic cards and we'll go into more of that as well later when we talk about some deck building stuff. And once you have played those cards, uh, some of them may be one-time use, uh, usually events work that way. Some of them, this one for instance, is just a resource, so it's really just literally just to generate resources for you. Uh, you may also get cards like allies and support that stay in play and those are nice because uh, you will be able to use them later on on your turn as an action. Usually an action will cost a resource or you exhaust the card and the cards will refresh later on. Um, and you also have your character right here. This is your identity card. And they will start in alter ego form, but can later be flipped to hero form. And that's very important, the difference between those two. And they will have their own abilities, depending on which form it is, that will have its own specific instructions. They also have their own basic abilities that you will exhaust the card to use. So in alter ego form, you can recover. You have a health total. If your health reaches zero, you die. And in hero form, you can attack either the main villain or a minion card that might be in play and do damage to them. You can also thwart, that's a big deal. That removes these threat tokens from their scheme. And that can be very important because if it gets too many, you will lose the game. Uh, there's also a defense stat, which will come into play during the villain phase. Then once all players have taken their turns, uh, you can move into the villain phase. Also, we should note that during your turns, you might be able to ask for help or ask other players to use their action actions, even if it's not their turn, you can help each other out uh, with certain cards and abilities. Now, the villain has his own little fun deck, and it has its own flavor of cards. You can start off, you've got just the minions, as Jonathan stated earlier, they tend to go out in front of someone and just attack them and bother them. We've got your treachery cards, these are like the event cards. They're one time, and they say one revealed usually on them, and actually will could depend in this case, for example, whether you're in hero form or alter ego form. We have side schemes. These pretty much go on top of the main scheme, and they work just like them, except they usually don't gain more threat, but they tend to have a, a bad constant effect, so you usually want to get rid of them as well. Then uh, we have attachments. These are just like the upgrades Jonathan showed earlier, except they attach usually to the big bad guy, and aren't usually good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, the other weird thing is that there's personal cards in here. Uh, every hero has a personal obligation that gets shuffled into the deck. For this case, for Captain Marvel, we have Family Emergency, and they usually involve flipping you over to your alter ego and possibly uh, exhausting or doing some other things to have to deal with it. The other interesting thing, uh, right now only this card has it, but there could be more, is Shadow of the Past, because every hero also comes with a little deck you put off to the side. This comes with an exclusive villain for them, uh, sort of like an archer villain, but maybe not much, because some of them are a bit, uh, I guess, B-list tier villains. <laughs> right. Uh, as well as their own little side scheme and cards who shuffle into the deck. So if you draw that card, you're forced to add these sort of personalized villains into the deck. But afterwards, the villain will add threat to his main scheme, depending on how much threat players are usually in play or other weird things. Uh, then he's going to attack the first player. He'll simply attack with that, and then he gets a card, flips it over, and depending on symbols, this doesn't have any. But this card, for example, would give him two more attack for that attack. Then the minions attack, they don't get a boost card. But after all the attacking is done, he then looks at the next player. So everyone's going to get hit by your villain, in this case the Rhino. But if you're in alter ego form, he doesn't attack because he doesn't know who you are. He just schemes more. So he gets even more threat thrown on that card. So you do need to balance whether you get take the damage because you don't want to get knocked out. 
or the getting the scheme to get too much of those tokens. Uh, if usually some of them have more than one of these main schemes, but if it's usually the last one, once it hits its threshold, it's game over. Once the villain has done his attacking and or scheming, uh, everyone will draw one card from here and that's when like the treachery will, may trigger or you may get minions in front of you. You see what happens and you just read the card and do what it says. Yeah, so you keep going around and around until either, like we said, that last scheme fills up and you lose or you knock the enemy's life down to zero and everybody mm -hmm. wins. Uh, and uh, the deck building in this game is interesting. The way that it works is each hero has their own specific set of 15 cards. So no matter what... Not including the obligation... And the, the nemesis cards. Nemesis, yeah, side if, deck. So if you're Spider-Man, you've got a set of cards that are always going to be in your deck. Then there are aspects and there are different types Types and colors of aspects. There's justice, protection, um, uh, aggression, and another one that I can't remember. Yeah. Anyway, there's multiple of them. And you will choose one of those colors plus these basic cards, uh, which are just generic that anybody can use. But you can only have one of those colors in your deck. So like the starter Spider-Man deck uses uh, the justice, which is yellow. Uh, so he can't use any of the red aggression cards, for example. But it is otherwise pretty straightforward. So it's a little bit, you kind of have more of a basis to work with when building a deck, it's not a total free-for-all or anything right. like that. Uh, most of the cards are, will say on there if there's a restriction on copies. Uh, like uh, many of the other Lord of the, uh, not, like Lord of the Rings or Arkham, there could be like Aunt May, well, she's in the Spider-Man set, but if they had that symbol, they're exclusive, so you can only have one copy of them in there, because, mm -hmm. you know, there's only one Aunt May or Nick Fury in this universe. <laughs> <laughs> as so, of now, yeah. Yes, as <laughs> that's, of now. That's how it works. Of course, so we're really looking at just this core base set. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an LCG, so a lot of the things that we say, of course, in a year from now, who knows, because the game will develop, new packs will be released, but it is a fully cooperative game if that didn't come across uh, clearly. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly, I think, comparisons to, like you said, Lord of the Rings, the Arkham Horror card game, if you've played any of the LCGs um, from Fantasy Flight, you'll probably be a little familiar with so how some of the there basics are, work. Yes, there are some elements that are very familiar as someone who has played a lot of both of those and enjoy them. Like, for example, the uh, powering up effect that he has for his own attack is similar to the shadowing for more of the rings, except in that one, the, all the minions get it, not just one guy. So you have to deal, that's more of a, uh, a threat, I guess. So in mm -hmm. this, it feels like it's just him. Then you're like, all right, whatever. He's going to do his thing. Right, yeah. So th of course there are going to be differences. Oh, there's also these condition cards too. Some people can get them and, you know, they may make them harder to hit or make them lose a turn. Uh, different things could happen, different effects. And I'm sure there will be more keywords and all kinds of things oh, yeah. that will come out uh, in the months to come. Uh, but as it stands, um, we're big fans of Marvel. And we're also big fans of the LCG format, although certainly you have delved into them uh, at least the Arkham one, and a little bit of Netrunner you've done, a lot more than I have. Yeah, I definitely think I enjoy the card game format more. Like, when I finish playing the first time with this, I'm like, oh, I think I know what I want to do this deck. I feel like I'll take this out, and you're just like, no, the starter decks are fine. <laughs> well, that's why, so that's why the things I love this compared to those other LCGs is because of how easy it makes that deck building, It's I feel like it is much more accessible, and I don't feel like nearly as much as uh, the other ones, certainly from just a base set, are feel as much of like complete product and certainly as an example with all the previous LCGs, you've needed at least two or three of the base to get a full set of cards. That is true. That um, is not but, the case well, here. Oh, a full set of cards if you use that card for a deck or something. So right, not, right. But yeah. Um, in this case, you, everything you need is going to be in that set, uh, which is really nice. And I feel like, you know, like I, like you said, I'm not as, um, I, I don't get as involved in the deck building usually. That usually scares me off. Um, I may, you know, I may dabble in this. I'm, I'm still waiting to see. I'll pick up a few packs and see how I feel about it. But um, that, I mean, that's a side thing. As far as actually the game itself is concerned, that's my primary focus really. And I really, really, really like it. I um, guess to me, the deck building is a major component of this to me. <laughs> well, to me, it's a deck building I, and then there's the mechanics. Right, but because it, it's an LCG, so like when I looked at uh, Black Panther, for example, the way he works is he has these really strong equipments, but they only activate when he plays the Wakanda Forever. And I remember thinking like, okay, I really need to customize his deck to build around that. And I was also thinking even a little bit later, for example, Spider-Man, one of your favorite heroes, probably your favorite hero in general among superheroes, he does play a certain way. And if you don't like playing Spider-Man that way, you're forced with the 15 cards he has. I mean, yes, of all the heroes, Spider-Man's most certainly they're going to have like 20 different versions of him in the future. <laughs> uh -huh. But it, for better or for worse, it's a double-edged sword here that, that 15 cards that you're sort of stuck with with that hero really sort of 
pigeonholes them in what they're supposed to do a bit. Yeah, I guess that's true. I guess I... It's, uh, it has its pros and cons, I guess, is what I'm I mean, with it, for the ones we've played in this, I never felt like, oh, I wish this one wasn't this. I, I felt well, pretty... Well, I wasn't feeling too much with that. It was more of like, mostly because I just enjoyed all of them in general, but like, if you really wanted like She-Hulk to be more of a th the, the thwarting instead of the strength attacks, because, I mean, she's a Hulk. Sure, sure. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the things with any... Um, a licensed game, you know, mm -hmm. of, of, you know, at a certain point they have to decide like, look, one character has to be like more of a support character, like, so you may not get your perfect matchup that you want with the characters you love. Right. But what do you think about, I mean, once you're, once you're playing the game, you know, how do you feel about the, you know, minute to minute mechanics of it? You know, you think it was fun? really interesting because they, compared to the other ones, uh, you know, Arkham, you can only do three things a turn, really. You know, you weren't really doing that much. Mm -hmm. That was your limit. And with uh, Lord of the Rings, that was more like the classic, like Magic the Gathering. You generated, I don't know, remember what they call their, re I think it's resources. I can't remember what their, their currency is in that, mm -hmm. depending on your heroes. And so it was sort of like, how do I spend that? And this, it's your cards. Yes. <laughs> so hypothetically, depending on if you have a draw train going or uh, like some cards that make things cheaper, which in this case, I think are almost desperately needed in every deck because you have to discard cards to play them and sometimes that really stinks because you're like i could play this card but now i can't put because i have to discard yeah. this but that also means that on a if you have a good turn like a good draw beforehand or something like that you're also in like boom 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 like you're doing all this crazy stuff like you had a turn when you were like i'm gonna attack with spider-man then i play black cat and then i do this like you do like jumping all over the place yeah you could definitely get some cool combos and really engine building going on i really like the um yeah the resource system i there it's definitely especially when you're newer and maybe you don't know your deck as well or you didn't build it so it doesn't it's not perfectly matched to what you like um there can definitely be some hard choices where you're like I want to play all of these cards, but you got to optimize and really, it's, you know, you got to decide which ones are the ones that I can maybe, maybe they'll be better late game. And right now I want to use it to play this and build something. First. I will say while I had, I think it was mostly fine for most of the decks when playing them in this, it scares me because <laughs> drawing is always like the king in mm -hmm. card games, mm -hmm. and when you have to spend your cards to do that, it's going to make it so, like, that's such an important thing. It's like, how can I make a deck that doesn't use drawing? Like, any card that lets you draw now, I'm worried, are just going to be like, those have to be in your deck. Well, it is nice that... But, like you said, this is the core. It they is, can come right. up with a lot of weird stuff. It is nice that every card has a resource by default, and that most of the time, you uh, don't need a... Usually, some cards will call for specific resources, but in general, it doesn't matter which type it is. So, it is pretty forgiving, at least in that sense, uh, because it's hard enough. Yeah, like, usually it's a bonus. Like, there, the three types are, I think it's like mental, physical, and energy. That's right, yeah. And it's never like, like that. this card can only be played with energy, at least that I've seen. It's usually just, if you paid with physical, Physical, this gets a bonus right which right. is I think better because sometimes you just you have to play that card it's not uh, like in magic one of the common terms is mana screwed where you just don't get any lands right right that's not really gonna happen here it's I, more I think of, it's a nice balance it is uh, I also really liked the um, being able to use actions outside your own turn I think there's a really nice sense of cooperation and synergy between players and especially if you had like a full set of four it goes with four players um, you know if you really make your decks like you said you have maybe one of each aspect you're really one guy's on the threat one guy's on attacking one guy's more support um, and the fact that you can use some of those abilities on someone else's turn like there's a card oh I'll let you draw a card right now if you want it and it feels you know it feels good to be able to do that for someone um, there's the, yeah there's a lot more cooperation which is really fun to ha talk about because there were two cards which I'm almost certain I mean, they're in the base that this tends to be how LCGs work. And it's cooperative, so you don't really care too much. <laughs> uh, the Helicarrier and the Avengers Mansion, they're expensive, but one makes er the next card played cheaper, the other drawing. So if your hand is pretty good, like you don't have anything too crazy like to play or expense, you're like, oh, I'll give you the discount this turn. So mm -hmm. you can all of a sudden, if everyone focuses on one person, all of a sudden they play Hulk, and then they play this, and then this. Right. You know? or, or maybe, yeah, or maybe you don't feel as bad if your turns, you don't have a great hand, but you could still do some stuff and help someone else out. Uh, that, that's a nice consideration. Let, let's talk about the villains, though. Uh, this comes with three villains, and they actually sort of connect story-wise. Not like, we're not talking like Arkham Horror kind of story connection, where you're going through a whole campaign. There's really. no progression. You don't upgrade mm -hmm. or get experience or anything like that. But it's sort of like, this one did something, and then it mentioned it in the next one. And 
I thought that was the perfect amount to have in here because really you didn't feel like you missed out from not playing one of them. You're like, okay, great. I'm going against the Rhino. Uh, I don't think it's spoilers, mm-hmm. but the three included are the Rhino, the Claw. Is it Claw or just Claw? I think it's just Claw. The Claw and Ultron. And Ultron, yeah. So the we, Ultron. So we do get like a big, big bad for the very end. And those are in scaling difficulty. And they have a few other, uh, like you can add in some expert cards or different uh, like scenario packs too. So you can mix it up a decent amount with those, which is cool. Uh, yeah, I thought they were I thought they were cool. I think the way they work is um, threatening enough. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, with some fun twists. Rhino is certainly the pushover of the bunch. He's the <laughs> starter guy. Uh, but but I like the other ones. We had our we had our differences with which ones we like we liked that were we felt were stronger and maybe well, you might have different experiences. I also think for us in those experiences is just the decks we used were better suited to fight that character. Right. That's a, definitely a part of it as with a lot of these card games. Um, I also really like the way they work in the theme in a lot of these things uh, uh, in kind of subtle ways. Obviously like the obligations are really funny that like uh, Peter Parker gets an eviction. I like notice. the alter egos, our thing. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, overall, I mean, I, I, I truly. No, I want to play this game more. Yeah, and I tend to like any of the cooperative LCGs because yeah, uh, a, a lot of times if you do have those deck building woes. It doesn't feel as bad in the cooperative because you can usually just like, whatever, we'll work together for that. And you're not really, as if you mess up a rule, you don't guys don't usually feel as bad. And you don't have to feel like, oh, they bought the newest decks and they looked up the better and now I, and I didn't and I, I'm not behind or mm-hmm. something. Yeah. The villains, I think, pretty much spot on what they should do. Uh, I liked adding the different schemes. The way they attacked and the shadowing not being nearly as much in Lord of the Rings, that can always be a pain because when there's four enemies on the field, they all shadow and all of a sudden, like, one makes you discard, one makes you shuffle, one goes back to the... It's much more complicated Mm -hmm. in that sense. Uh, yeah, at least with these basic ones. And also, there's a solo mode, too. You can play it with one player. I tried that out, and it works pretty well. It definitely, you could play it with more than one character just by yourself, but uh, definitely having the co-op and the synergy feels a little better. But I think it works perfectly viably if you like these kinds of games solo. I think you'll be able to do that here pretty well. Crits and misses for Marvel Champions. Here are our crits. The resource management mechanic forces you to make some interesting decisions as to which cards in your hand you want to play and which ones you're willing to spend. Luckily in this game you can't deck out by emptying your deck, you actually reshuffle it, so it's not the end of the world if you lose a card. There's a big focus on cooperation, of course, and the ways that you can synergize with your fellow players, even using abilities outside your own turn, can be really fun. The game works the theme into its mechanics in a clever way through things such as your alter ego and hero forms and various keywords that make it feel like you're playing as the heroes themselves. The theme mechanics and cards in the personalized little hero decks are really cool, Uh, whether it's the mechanic to try to assemble Iron Man's full suit, whether Spider-Man having cards like Aunt May, or Black Panther having Vibranium. The deck building process here is streamlined compared to other LCGs. It's very accessible and friendly if you're new to the game or don't want to focus as much on that aspect of it. Deck building is designed such that once you choose a hero, 15 cards in your 40 to 50 card deck are already picked out. This really helps you sort of already decide how should your deck work, what's the mechanics for it, and what is your role in this cooperative game. Misses. Because you have to play cards by discarding cards for resources, It can sort of stink if a card costs a lot because you feel like you have to lose every card in your hand just to play one card. Uh, This is also a little bit worrying for me because drawing already is big in any kind of card game, and this might become a forced staple if you want to take on some of the harder bosses. Depending on which cards you do or don't draw, playing some of those higher cost cards can be really challenging. And if you don't get a good early hand or a good set of cards in the first few rounds, you might really have trouble getting your engine in motion. While it's very helpful early on with those 15 initial locked in cards for your hero, later on when you get more skilled in this game and deck building, it can feel a little rigid that you wish you maybe had an extra card here and there and you can maybe mess around with those. Unless they make a new version of your hero, you're sort of locked in what that hero is supposed to do. So there is sort of one extra miss I want to talk about. I don't think it should be included in our crits and miss session because it's less about the game (laughs) and more the format. I think it's more of a crit for me but a miss for you. And that's it's an LCG. Hmm. This means it's just constantly feeding out packs. I tend to like that because that means more cards they get to throw in. I love getting a next little Arkham pack. I know for you, when we first heard of this, you are even like, 
I might get into this initially, get some of the first packs, but then I'm like, I'm just going to be done. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's definitely not a miss for me. I mean, I think if you like or don't like the LCG format, you know that already. Right, and that's one of the things why I didn't want to include it in the miss section. It's not much of a... Yeah, it is game. what it is. Yes. Um, I, I definitely, it, it's it's not, I just am wary of anything that I know may continue for multiple years that I'm going to have to be buying packs month after month after month. Uh, but, you know, I think that with the format of this game, what's nice is all the heroes are standalone decks you can buy. The villains all are standalone and work with Right, we didn't cards. actually mention, we actually looked ahead to see what it's like, partially because once we saw there's a story aspect, we're like, our they're going to be story in the expansions, like Arkham mm -hmm. or something. Right. From what we can tell, they're very iffy on it. What we do know is that we're getting Captain America, Miss Marvel, and Thor, mm -hmm. and each of those hero decks are going to be standalone. So you can actually buy them with without the base. So let's say hypothetically, Jonathan, well, Jonathan's the one who owns the base. I could buy Captain America and have a deck ready to go. Yeah, which is awesome. And for me, that's a big part of it is I'm like, well, you know, I could buy, if there's a character I just don't like, I don't feel like I'm missing out by not buying They it. do also come with extra cards or actually if you have a character you do like, it's ready to go. Yeah, which is great. So, you know, even if, like, if so, if you don't care about deck building at all, like you're a really casual player and you just don't even know about it, you never have to do it, really. It, or, or at the bare minimum, like, you could just, oh, let me swap, like, the yellow cards from Spider-Man with the red cards from Iron Man and see how that works. And that's very easy. Like, you can just do that, which I think is cool. The villain expansions, they said, I think the first one's Green Goblin. If I right, correctly, Green Goblin. and that comes with a bit more cards and a few more schemes. I'm not sure how they're going to work, whether it's just like as if the one Rhino or that, or there's going to have his own little story thing. We'll have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. I will not be surprised, though, if we see big boxes later on. I mean, Game of Thrones has it. They actually released the last big box, and they're slowing down both Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings. And I, you noted, you pointed out, both on the box art and in the cards, that there aren't really any X-Men. <laughs> yeah. uh, we assume that this is because of the whole deal with Fox, because, uh, let's be honest, the movies and the TV shows are going to push a lot of how we see these characters nowadays. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to be... I'd be shocked if within the... If this does well... Within the next year or two, we don't see just a big X Men box. Yeah, something like that would be awesome. I do, I do love the selection. That you, I know some people would have liked more. Why isn't Captain America in the base? Like, why is She Hulk there? But I like the mix. We had this conversation. How <laughs> I'm like, well, you know, this is a bunch of heroes, and you're just like, so you buy the next pack. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, so I, I think it's, I think that part is cool. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot that I really like about it. I, it's interesting. I feel like it's very telling of our uh, our personalities when when it comes to these kinds of games. I I remember, I think Keyforge, we have almost, even though it's not an LCG, almost the exact same things that I liked that you didn't like as much being pre-built decks, you can't build as much, and the way the energy system works, like it's a little simpler, but sometimes you get frustrated when you can't play what you want. And yeah, I feel like it's a similar thing here. It just, uh, it, those things work for me as better than they do for you. But I think in this case, you still are very no, much into this game. This one, I, I, I love all the cooperative LCGs, honestly, before the... Like, I, don't get me wrong, Netrunner and Game of Thrones are fun to play, but if I, if you're going to have me choose between, like, this, <laughs> yeah. like, and the cooperative ones, and the, I'm going to go for them. And I was really happy that this one shared a lot of elements, like, oh, I recognize that from this. I remember I probably bugged you a few times to be like, I know this Lord of the Rings card. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but it wasn't a, just a reskin, which is really nice, because then you feel like I can... Like, you're probably at this, our friend who has Lord of the Rings, you're going to bring it over, and he's going to excite and recognize things, but he's going to be like, oh, I can do this now, which I couldn't do in Lord of the Rings or Arkham or something. So I yeah. really like that it's, like, just enough to be, like, you can make the leap, but it's not just, uh, I, it's the same game. Yeah, definitely. So... Yeah, there's a lot to love, and again, more of these packs are going to be coming out soon, so a lot of things are going to be changing, but as it stands, if you, I think if you like the LCG format, or you like Marvel, or you like co-op games, something like Sentinels of the Multiverse, definitely very akin to that kind of thing, but with these heroes that you know, uh, it's absolutely worth picking up the core set, and I feel like even if you decide, eh, I don't want to like go all out for it, I'm not crazy about it, you can, the core set can exist, kind of, as its own thing, uh, at least for a little a while and you won't feel like oh I need to well I'm actually thinking about like because usually in the other game all the other SSGs there's a few cards that were core really to all of the decks in the core sets mm -hmm. but if like Captain America coming out as a play around I bet some of those core cards I mentioned like the Hell Carrier might be in them 
Yeah. They might not be as hard to get. So I think that might not be, this might be the one that you can get away with that <laughs> finally. Yeah, we'll find out. We'll By the way, uh, now that we've done the review, can I mess with these decks? <laughs> uh, we'll see. All, all subject to my approval. Uh, let us know in the comments section. Have you been taking the plunge? Did you play Marvel Champions? Where, where do you stand on how much deck building you like to do? Which heroes are you looking forward to? Where do you put this in all of the LCGs that Fantasy Flight has? Or maybe some of the ECGs. I mean, we didn't even bring up Versus, mostly because that's more of a competitive game, and I think that plays very differently yeah. to this. Yeah, yeah. But I'd love to hear people's thoughts on that. Let us know. Until next time, guys. Excelsior. I'm Jonathan. I'm Will. This is Roll for Crit. Like this video, subscribe to our channel, and support us on Patreon. That would make us happy. Maybe the next video is the one where Jonathan does a silly dance.